Hi, today I'll be simulating a buffer overflow attack using a C program. I'm running a 64-bit Ubuntu 18.04 system and I'll be using GDB PIDA for this. A buffer overflow occurs when a process tries to write more data into a buffer than it is allocated to hold. And this usually happens when we use unsafe instructions like gets and str copy in our programs, which does not check or keep a bound on the number of bytes which it reads or copies. So basically what we'll do today is, we'll create an input which causes a buffer overflow and our input will contain code to spawn a new shell. Then we'll rewrite the actual return address with our own and we'll make the process execute our shell code. Now for an actual attacker, he would be able to inject malicious code instead of our shell code. Most modern operating systems have measures to prevent buffer overflow. We'll be disabling them first and proceeding with the attack. The first one is ASLR or Address Space Layout Randomization. This is a memory protection method which guards against buffer overflows by randomizing the location where executables are loaded. To disable this, we use this command. This variable can take three values, 0, 1 or 2. 0 means no randomization and 2 means full randomization. So now we've disabled the ASLR. There are other methods also like canaries and non-executable stack. But before we disable those, let's take a look at our vulnerable code. This is a simple C code that I wrote. It allocates a buffer of size 512 and copies the command line argument into the buffer. The vulnerability here is in our use of str copy instead of str n copy. str copy doesn't check the number of bytes that is that it copies into the buffer. So this we'll be using to simulate our buffer overflow attack. First, let's compile it like we usually do. And we'll open it using GDB. So this is the GDB PIDA and we'll run it using some random input and we see that it runs successfully. Now what will happen if we give an input that is greater than our buffer size of 512? Suppose we give uh, an input of size 550. To do that, I'll be using a Python script. Which will print out 550As. We see that we get an error and the program has been aborted. Here we see that a stack smashing has been detected. So our attempt to overflow the buffer has been detected and the program has terminated. We cannot uh, do a buffer overflow attack in this situation. Now GDB provides us a method to check the security measures which, which are in place using checksec. And we see the canaries, non-executable stack and PIE has been enabled. So now let's disable those. We disable those at compile time itself using some flags. The stack protector flag, executable stack flag, no pi flag and so on. Now we, if we run this using GDB, using the same input of 550As, we see that it doesn't recognize the stack smashing and instead we get a segmentation fault. So now we can proceed forward with our attack. So GDB shows us all the registers and their memory addresses and values and here if we look at it we can see that most of the registers have been overwritten by a so what has happened is that since we give gave an input which is greater than our buffer it has overflowed buffer size it has overflowed our buffer and gone into the registers so the rbp has been uh, overwritten the rsp has been overwritten and we have got a segmentation fault So typically it's the RSP which tells the program where to continue execution. So what happens is that when a function returns, the uh, value in the RSP is copied to the RIP or the instruction pointer and the execution uh, proceeds from there. So our aim is to take control of the RSP. That is if we can write uh, our own address in the RSP, that will be copied to the RIP when the function returns and then whatever code that we want to execute can be executed. So we need to find the length of the input so that we can correctly override the RSP. For that, we use something called patterns in GDB PIDA. 
we can create a pattern using this command we can create suppose i create a pattern of length 550 and i can store it to a file next we run the program using this pattern again we see a segmentation part if we look at the registers we see that instead of our a's we get some random pattern this is actually the pattern which was created by the PIDA interface now uh, since this pattern is unique GDB provides us another function called pattern search by which we can get the offsets at which these patterns started overwriting the registers so here is what we want RSP began to be overwritten at the offset of 520 and this is the value that we'll be using so in this size of 520 bytes we can put our shell code and other things and padding and if we and if in another six bytes we write the address to which which points to our shell code in the buffer we can execute our attack and we can run the shell so the next step is to find a return address to which we with which we have to overwrite the rsp and to find the shell code i have some shell code which I've got from the internet. Its length is 27 bytes. So out of 520 bytes, we have 27 bytes of the shell code. Now we have another thing called a no op sled. A no op sled or uh, x90s are used to point the CPU to our destination. So uh, when a CPU encounters a no op, it automatically moves to the next instruction. I have a file of inputs. So this is what we'll be using. So our uh, input will be as follows. We'll have a bunch of no ops at first. Then we have the shell code. And then we have some padding which I've given as A's here just so that we can accommodate the stack moving a little bit and here we'll have our return address so suppose i run this in gdb now and instead of the return address we'll give a bunch of b's here we can see that the instruction pointer has been overwritten by B's just as we expected. RIP has been overwritten by B's. So our assumption of 520 bytes of no ops plus shell code and 6 bytes of B's here which will which we later change to our uh, return address is correct. So instead of the B's here we should find a return address to which we want to return to. In order to find that we can explore an area near the RSP here we see that all these memory addresses are full of no ops or our x90s so here we have our shell code followed by our padding of A's so we can choose any random address in the middle of these no ops for example if I choose this and since our um, system is little endian, we have to key that in in the reverse format. So I'll just so first will be eighty, then e two. then f f. F. So now we have our return address ready. We have our shell code here. We have our padding here. And we have our no ops here. And no ops plus shell code plus the padding should equal 520, which we got as the offset. And we have a 6 byte um, return address. So typically, when we execute this, what should happen is that the shell code 
uh, should uh, should execute and a new shell should should be spawned we'll try executing it see we got it as it's, it's executing a new program bin dash and we got our shell now if we execute some command like who am i here i get the result now since we are exec if we are executing this inside gdb it quits immediately and this may not work for everyone because inside and outside gdb there might be a difference in the address spaces but if we give this input here outside the gdb the one with our addresses we get a shell here also so we have successfully executed our buffer overflow attack thank you